Hey, hey, welcome back. We are upcycling the crap out of this thing, aren't we? So, uh, I haven't really done much since the last video, but I did want to show you this. So these are the pieces of glass that sit here. You see how it used to be red, but it's kind of flaking off down here on the bottom and up here. So what I did was I took uh, spray paint. It's called Triple Thick. I don't know. I think Krylon or uh, Rust-Oleum makes it. And I just hammered it. Wet coat so that it saved whatever was here. And I have some other red paint that I'm going to get to kind of go over that to try to fill in those spaces. Same, there's two pieces of glass. I did it to both. So I've done that. <clears throat> that all looks the same. The bulbs are on their way here. I put polyurethane down on those shelves. So now they'll be at least resistant to some staining. Ooh, man, I swear I trip on something in every video, don't I? I should have a cleaner garage. Maybe that would help. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, I'll get those things put back together and then we'll get that head unit in. But today we're going to do a science experiment. Let me show you. So look at the back of this, right? Here's the door. It's pretty. This is not pretty. This is all yellowed. It's plastic and it's just, I don't know what fades it, but if any of you guys have like an old PlayStation or, uh, you know, maybe a, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, keyboards from like the nineties, all the plastic yellows out really bad, right? So what you can do, at least that I've heard, is you can put this stuff outside in the sunlight like this and you use, whoop, I just squeezed it, it's a brand new bottle, dumb. Anyways, hydrogen peroxide and you hammer it down and let it sit in the sun. I'm going to do that all day and we're going to see if this comes out any better. I'll take a picture quick so we can see what one day of sunlight and uh, soaking it with hydrogen peroxide does. Lots of people swear by it. I don't know if we're going to get it done in one day, but that's what I'm shooting for. So the sun <clears throat> is behind some clouds right now, but the cloud cover is getting ready to move out and it's supposed to be brilliant sunlight for the rest of the day. So that is what we're going to tackle there. Also, the Bluetooth came so I can start putting the stereo back in it and get that hooked up and test it out. And we'll be jamming out in no time, hopefully. And this will look better. I'm going to get, if this even starts to work, I'm going to go get that title strip holder and bring it out here and do the same thing to it because it's real nasty too. Here, let me go grab it. So yeah, pretty sad state of affairs with this thing, huh? This is down by the light. I, I'm guessing like heat does it, you know, I guess maybe light exposure does it too. But I don't know that those old fluorescent bulbs were like UV bulbs. You know, it should be white like that, but it's all stained. I think a lot of people mistake it for like nicotine or like cigarette smoke. Maybe that attributes to it. I don't know. But hopefully some of the sunshine will alleviate our sorrows with these things. So I put a wet coat of it on there. Probably the most ideal thing to do would be to put it in a just tub of this stuff. But I don't have anything big enough to hold this. If it ends up working, then I'll certainly make sure to get one because almost all the title strip holders, this is probably the worst one I've ever seen, but they're all somewhere in here, you know, between here and here, yellow. And if you get rid of that and you put white titles on the back, boy, does it look so much better. So I'll show you here a little bit later what this all looks like when we get to the end of the day. Hopefully it's nice, pretty white. All right, so I got those things soaking in the sun. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Bluetooth stuff. I finally got my stuff in. So 
I'm going to install it. Now, my initial thought was I just set it on top of the radio. But there's a lot of glass and plastic and everything else in the way. I'm sure line of sight with these things has a lot to do with it. But my thought was, wouldn't it be cool if it was in here? It's in open air. If you ever need to access it, you can hit the buttons from right here. And you don't have to dink around, right? So that's cool. Problem is, I ain't got no holes to stick any of the wires through. They don't fit anywhere. So I'm going to have to drill one. <clears throat> Not a big deal. I'll just mark out where it needs to be right there and just pop a little hole in it. And then the wires can go out. And then everything will be lined up for the radio to sit right back there. I'm going to use a stepper so I can get the hole big enough to get the RCAs and everything else through. Yeah. Let me show you what I got. And there you have it. So I'll finish vacuuming that out. But that'll be just a little gateway to get some wires back into it. So let's explain, or let me explain how this works. So this is just a little Blu-ray receiver. Got it off Amazon. Wasn't the most expensive, wasn't the cheapest either. So here, this plugs into the back of it. And then it has RCAs that plug into the back of the stereo. Um, if you have a stereo that has USB ports, then you could just plug your power wire right into that. This one does, but it's in the front, I think. So I'm going to use this and I'll just plug it in right here. So, and then the other reason I wanted this, because if you wanted to connect or say you had people over or something, I'm pretty sure you have to like hit these buttons to make this thing, you know, search for other ones or be searchable. And if you had to open the jukebox every single time you had to do that, that'd be a bummer. I'm hoping that this has the capability where you can set the stereo kind of loud, connect to it on Bluetooth with your phone, and then control the volume up and down that way. Uh, that has yet to be determined. I don't really know what the terminology for that would be, so I did read everything, but I don't know if that's something that works on this or not, so we're going to find out. So I'll throw that in real quick. So there you go. I've got the power wire going up and that audio wire going down into the back of this. And I have it set so that it's on CD. So if I mess with the input, there you go, it's on CD. And instead of mounting it, I thought I originally would mount it. Up here somewhere. I decided against that. Now it's in the coin box. You know, from any other angle, you couldn't really see it. But it kind of gives off that little blue light. And the light in the top of this jukebox, up on the top of that blue, this blue chrome, this display up at the top, we'll have kind of a blue ambiance that comes out through that too. So this way, you know, you can get to it. You can touch your buttons, get it connected, whatever, without having to open it up. I also cleaned off the rest of this nasty tape, but there you go. Bluetooth is done. I'll show you how that works in a later video, but let's go ahead and move on to fixing some of that glass up top that has some paint flaking off of it. So the next project I've got, so this is stained glass, cranberry red. It's not the same color as this, but it's close. And it's the only kind of paint I can find that'll work on glass and still let some of the light through. But look how bad that is, right? It wouldn't be maybe that big of a deal, except for there are two light bulbs right behind this. And that looks terrible. This is kind of what happens when you store these things with painted glass outside. At least this emblem is still good. 
but as you can see, these are both pretty roached out. So what I did on this one is I taped off everything but the outer edge, and then in the top right, you'll see right there is a, I don't know, red button, red light that would come on, and another one that says deposit more coins. So I need those to look better, and the reason for that is there's a cover that goes over the back of this that has individual light bulbs in it. Well, because of how brittle the plastic was, again, kind of the whole reason I am not saving this thing is because it just was, there was just way too much wrong with it. So I took that cover off and now every one of these little buttons is going to be lit up all the time because the light that shines on this in general is just going to illuminate right over the top of that since that piece is gone. So hopefully this works. We're going to find out. Um, I do know from a different project that I'm working on for a USC band shell uh, that I did some spray painting on this with this clear, well, translucent, transparent. Well, it's the orange is what I painted in this. And if you look at the purple, right, you can see, like, look at the lettering behind that. Like, you can kind of see through it, right? We'll look at the orange. With a lot of light, you can see shadows, but you can't really see through it. So when this thing is off and just sitting here, it's going to look good, right? Same with this. I did the purple on this one because there was a lot of it missing down here. So, I mean, it's going to look decent just sitting around, but as soon as you flick that light on, this is supposed to sit behind it and kind of give it a 3D effect. So let's see what's good on this one, the orange and the purple. I finally, I got it painted in. Look how faded off the purple was. The purple's here. So now granted you get some light behind it and that's supposed to make like a red color. But, you know, you just can't see through it very good. So... I'm working with a guy who's going to make me new ones for that. Anyhow, the whole story is this you don't necessarily have to see through it as clearly as you do on that one. This was more of just a painted one that will let a little bit of light through. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I think this can was like 14 bucks. It's hard to find. They quit making most of the colors. So that's what we're going to do. A few light coats, then... I'm just going to bomb it, and we'll see how it looks. All right, and there you have it. So, it's not going to be perfect, naturally. But see how it's red, at least. That's going to be better than it just being white. So, you know, I'm sure someone somewhere could make this over but i'm not paying to uh have that done if the next person cares that much they can but again it's it's not a genuine jukebox anymore all the guts are gone so we're just trying to make it as presentable as we can so it looks as neat as possible so i'm gonna go ahead and throw those in and throw the light bulbs in and i'll show you what it looks like right. then. So they're in. When you're mounting them like this, you know, they got to be upside down when you put them in. So we'll flip them over in a second. But as you can see, got two new, these are 30 inchers. And the only place I could find them was online. So this is where the number plate used to sit, which is this. Now, normally when this thing would have parked, you know, the, the mech scans back and forth and then parks and it kind of kicks it back a little bit. It would have parked on like 179 or 178 or 278, you know, something like that. So what I did, and somebody may hate me for this because they have a broken one that they really need. So this was built, pretty sure, in 69. 
So what I did was I cut using that oscillating tool out here and here, and then both ends off of here carefully because this is where this all connects. I know this looks real hobnobby and I apologize, but you'll see why I did it here in a second. Then I put HVAC tape, just reflective tape on each side. So any light that comes in there makes it light up. The wires to this are no longer attached. There's, they came in, I think, um, boy, I don't remember. Oh, they come in underneath here and then run out the back and then went up or down. Can't remember exactly, but all of this is dead now. And I don't want to just take it out because it's part of the display for the jukebox. And I don't want it to just be a blank dead, you know, piece of space. So that's what I did. This kind of clips in there just like that. Can you see how you can see the two? So the one is really ugly and burnt because that's where it parked all the time. So the bulb that was inside of here burnt this and it looks like a different color purple. So I did number 269. This is a 1969 jukebox. I'm pretty sure anyways. So let's plug it in. There, and we got some lights. And then see? 269 lights up. Now again, it would have been probably 179 or 78 because it parked right on the last bit of the records. But that's what we're doing. 269. Here it was built plus the 200s, so it's kind of authentic. So moment of truth, when I put these bulbs in, they didn't want to light up right away. One of these starters was bad. And then the other one, it was crackling and the light would kind of turn on and then turn off and then turn on and then turn off. I mean, it was kind of like, man, is this going to start a fire? Like, this is not cool. I do not like this. And I just kind of let it go. And then eventually it just kind of went bum and it was on. I'm like, oh, I wonder if this is one of those deals where it needs to knock some of the cobwebs loose. So then I got this light going. And it did the exact same thing, and then it turned on and stayed on. And I let it, I just left it on for probably an hour just so that it had constant feed through that. And then you saw, I just plugged it in, and boom, there they are. So, anyways, I've got my lights showing up there. Our bulbs are in. Let's shut it. And see how it looks. Huh? I think it looks good. Now, it's not there. I was going to say, it's not picking that up the way it should. There you go. See? I don't know if it's just a weird reflection, but see, that did quite a bit for us, didn't it? Now this is, the bulb is straight down and that's why it looks like this. And it looks like it's white, but it is red. To my eye, it's like apple red where this is white. I'm, I don't know, my eyes would be from like right here. So that looks worse than it is in person. It is actually red. It doesn't match this, but it is red. To my eye from that angle, that's what it looks like. Doesn't match perfect, so you can still see it. But it looks pretty good. So, got the blue ambiance up here. At night, you'll probably get a little bit more of it right there. Man, it wouldn't be a good video of mine if I wasn't tripping over a snowboard or a broom or something. There's always something falling. A little blue over here blue over here and from the other videos you can maybe recognize that this looks much brighter because I treated it with peroxide and I learned a valuable lesson that I'll share with you now peroxide whitens this old plastic up quite a bit that was much worse before 
and it whitened up the stuff on here too. Really, it did pretty good. But the problem is because these two pieces or because this is two pieces, I should have taken this all the way apart and separated this piece from the painted piece. If you've ever wondered, can you do that trick with something that's got painted back on it? You cannot, because it will peel up the paint. Now I was using a pretty heavily concentrated version of it, but you know, it should be blue between my two fingers, it should be blue all the way down. To be honest, I kind of like now, I mean, this is what we're left with. You live and you learn, but I actually kind of like this. What I don't like though, is that that stuff looks yellow. Then it kind of makes this look yellow instead of blue. And it would be awesome if it all looked blue like that. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is get a tube that covers this light bulb with blue. So then it has a blue ambiance there and it shows blue down there. And even if it's a different color blue, as long as it's not like dirty yellow, that would be better. Let's check it out with the lights off. And there you go. So this thing was destined for the dump. Most guys that are serious about this hobby would have left this thing, honestly. I probably should have. But now that I've come this far, I'm glad that I didn't. So I think the blue up top looks good. And I think if the labels were blue and the bottom was blue, this thing would look rad. So I'm gonna do that. It's gonna take a couple days for it to show up. So I'll do that on my overall recap video. That'll be the next one. But we're doing good. It's alive. Like I said, it sounds good too. Let's see if I can get in here. I didn't really show you a whole lot. But I got the radio in there now. Good. This could always be changed out. And quite frankly, for the next person, if they want to completely take this thing out and just run speaker wires from their other stereo up in there, they can. But I thought adding the Bluetooth to it would make it actually function and cool. I'm undecided on whether or not I want to put all the labels back in it, but there they are. And again, from... I love that. I'm glad it is working. You probably wouldn't notice that if you didn't know anything about the jukebox or jukeboxes in general, but I think it's great. Putting all this stuff up here was definitely the right move. I'm gonna work on my wire management skills here once I get a little closer to hide that and make it look tidier. But you know, there's another jack that you could put a cell phone charger through and you could charge it down there. There you see, let's see, will it blink again? Blinked just a second ago, there it is, the Bluetooth. I'm not connected to it, so it's blinking. But you can control with this one anyways. Um, you can control the volume. So you can turn this up and just kind of leave it. And maybe that's bad for the radio, I don't know. Maybe one of you do. But you can turn it up down here and it stays pretty quiet. But you can turn it up down here and just leave it. That way you're not opening the cabinet every time you want to turn it up or down. But you can adjust the volume with your phone. You can change the song with your phone. And so far, I've gone up, down, and all over my house with my phone. And it still stays connected. The only time that it has disconnected is when I walked about a block away. And this was in my garage. So it, even in the biggest house that this could be in, unless you're in a safe room... I think you can pretty much walk anywhere and this thing's gonna 
stay connected. So, all right, cool. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll play some tunes on the next one. And hopefully I've got that blue light to finish this thing off and make it just as cool or if not cooler than it would have been when it was new. So like and subscribe. Even if you don't do that, drop me a comment and let me know what you think. Again, was it was this a waste of time? I'm thinking not. Initially, I didn't know. But I'm thinking this is a great investment of my time, especially considering this thing will live on instead of literally go to the dump or get parted out. So granted, we didn't necessarily upcycle the jukebox because it's still a jukebox, but it's not the typical jukebox that it would have been. Thanks again for watching. Catch you on the next one.